Hello, I'm Karen White, and today I'm presenting information for you on plagiarism, intellectual property, and documentation. When you use the words or the ideas of another person, or when you use any information outside of your own personal knowledge and experience, you must give credit to the source with a citation. You know, plagiarism is really a very serious business. Uh, regardless of whether it's intentional or not, I mean, how could you ever prove that it was unintentional? It would be put you in a very compromising, difficult position. Now, I want you to understand that an information source is not just words. A source is considered any intellectual property of another person, whether it's a computer code, a drawing, uh, perhaps an old photograph of Marilyn Monroe taken back in the 60s or maybe an old album cover or, you know, I, I've got a handout for you that accompanies this video and it will give you more information on the different types of intellectual property. Now, as a college student, it's your responsibility to understand and avoid plagiarism to maintain your academic integrity. Uh, you know, it's, it's one thing... <laughs> You know, to get a citation order wrong or to get points marked off because you missed a period or you forgot to put the dates in parentheses, you know, that's just trying to cite it but improperly citing it. But it's another thing to intentionally plagiarize. It is an ethical issue and a major disciplinary problem. So UT Martin uh, has a policy on academic dishonesty and it's rather lengthy. So I've just highlighted a portion of it here, and it says here that a student may be found to be in violation of academic integrity if they, one, indulge in plagiarism by presenting one's own for academic evaluation or assignment, the ideas, representations, or works of another person or persons without customary and proper acknowledgement of sources, which is documentation or citation. Or if you submit the work of another person in a manner that represents the work to be your own. Or if you knowingly permit your work to be submitted by another person. That's also a good example of academic misconduct. Here on the university's website under student affairs and student conduct, it says, this is clarification of disciplinary regulations. It says, in response to numerous inquiries, and uncertainties by students regarding disciplinary penalties for unacceptable behavior. The following list contain, contains examples for which suspension from the university is the expected penalty. That's plagiarism, cheating, and academic integrity issues. So it is indeed a very serious business. Well, let's talk about documentation styles. One of the things that you didn't have, you don't have as a BIS graduate will be that you don't really have one documentation style. Uh, you know, there are different styles used by different departments, different disciplines, but each documentation style offers very specific guidelines detailing how to incorporate quotes, paraphrases, summaries, and other material into your work, and how and where to document your sources. That includes in-text citations as well. So you, we have all these manuals at the library if you need them. Uh, you'd have to select a, an appropriate documentation style to the discipline. Here, engineering, they use IEEE. English uses MLA. Psychology and most of the behavioral sciences use APA citation. The history department uses the Chicago and Turabian. Uh, the biology department uses a citation style that I'm not figure, familiar with, but it's CBE. And here's an a APA citation. It seems like APA and MLA are probably the most used. But here there, I have given you, in APA style, an article and then a book. And this is just for you to look at and sort of get a general idea of how it's put together. I did the same thing for MLA. And again, I had an article here at the beginning and a book. And perhaps at some time in the future, you, if you want to stop and take a look at this, you can stop the video and look at the different parts and how it's put together. Well, I wanted to let you know that really there are only three ways to incorporate someone else's work into your own. You can quote, paraphrase, or summarize. 
And let's take a look at the distinguishing characteristics of these three. A quote, obviously, word for word, verbatim, you, you know, either in quotation marks or a block quote. And whatever citation style you're using for whichever class you're taking will tell you how many were, you know, what's the difference between using quotation marks and how big it needs to be to be in a block quote. Again, you're going to have to give credit to the creator of that information. And again, you know, each documentation style will tell you just exactly how to do it, you know, in text citation. Uh, here we go, paraphrase to take a small passage from a source, concentrating on one idea and putting it into your own words, your own phrases, your own sentences. I've also heard it called your own voice. And you want to do that so that it sounds like you, but you want to make very, very certain that you preserve the original meaning, the original intent of the work. And again, make sure you give credit to the creator of that work. Now, summarize to write a condensed overview of a large work dwelling only on the main points, the who, what, where, when, why, and how, and putting it in your own words, your own phrases, sentences, so that it sounds like you. And again, make sure you give credit to the original source. You know, I really think that paraphrasing and summarizing really takes practice. For me, it doesn't come naturally, but it, it's a very, very good skill. It's one you can use for the rest of your life. One of the things that I don't think I was told until I was, you know, older in college was that when you're in, including a quote in your paper, include an introduction in the form of a signal phrase or a sentence to provide proper context rather than just dropping it into a paragraph. I don't know. I just wanted to put it into words. Um, and I've done it here. I, you could say that Michael Jordan said, and you can put 2006 and then put the quote, or here I've come up with a sentence, one of the greatest athletes of all time, Michael Jordan, and I put the date of this particular video that it came from, one of the greatest athletes of all time, Michael Jordan, had this to say about failure. And you can read that if you wish. Of course, you have to give a citation for this for the reader to refer to at the end of your paper, and I have done that for all of my sources as well. Well, I thank you very much for listening.